Okay, let's look at this practice problem. It says a toy rocket leaves the ground with an initial velocity of 8.9 meters per second. And you're asked to find out how high in the air does it rise and how long does it take before the rocket falls back down to the ground. First thing we always do is write down what we know. And when you first look at this, it might look like you're not given almost any information at all. But you're actually given quite a lot of implied information. So the initial velocity equals 8.9 meters per second. Now because we're doing velocity, which has a direction, and we're doing linear velocity, I'm going to make a decision about which way is up, or which way was positive, and which way is negative. So I'm going to say that up is positive. It really doesn't matter what you pick as long as you're consistent. So my initial velocity is positive 8.9 meters per second. We also know that when it reaches its peak, for a split second, that instant, the velocity will be zero, the final velocity. This is to the peak. And we'll say at peak. And because this object is on Earth, we know that there is acceleration due to gravity. And because the acceleration is downwards, we're going to say it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're asked to find its final displacement. The equation we usually use for displacement is x plus x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. The problem is that we don't have time. Now we're not told initial displacement, but I've mentioned that unless it says otherwise, you can always assume initial displacement is zero. So, so you don't have time. But the second question asks you about time. So we can calculate this as long as we find the time first. So let's actually work on the second part of the question before we do the first. We have an equation that, using the variables we know, helps us solve for time. And we'll do that over here. And it's v equals v naught plus at. So when we plug into this equation, we know that the final velocity is zero when we're talking about at the peak. So this is going to be the time to the peak. Initial velocity is 8.9 meters per second plus negative 9.8 meters per second squared times time. Now we cannot add these two numbers because they're not like terms. We have 8.9 and we have 9.8t. Even though there's all these units in there, if that bugs you, then drop them. And you might see with your algebra that you can't add those. So we have to move the 8.9 over first. So we subtract 8.9 from both sides. And we get negative 8.9 meters per second equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t. So the next step on this is to divide both sides by negative 9.8 meters per second. And we get, we can say that time equals 0 0.91 seconds. And since this isn't an official answer to one of the questions, you don't have to worry about significant figures only to make sure that you have at least as many as you need. So we can glance up there and see that we'll need two significant figures in our answer. Don't round this to one. That's going to make your final answer very incorrect. Now you can keep two or three or four, but don't round it down less than two. So now we have the time to the peak. And since we're trying to find out how high the final displacement at the peak, we're going to use that in this equation up here. So we have x 
Remember we said we can always use zero unless it tells us specifically otherwise. Plus V naught, say 0.9 meters per second, times the 0.91 seconds, plus 1 half, and I'm going to have to drop units here, otherwise it's not all going to fit. 9.8 times 0.91 squared. So we can, when we do this math, we can drop the zero in 8.9 times 0.91. You can see the seconds cancel out to give us meters, which is what we should have. We can have zero point or 8.099 meters. You don't have to keep that many significant figures as long as you have two or more. And then you have plus, remember this is going to be negative because of that negative right there. And the second squared cancel out to give us meters. So you have 4.0 five, eight meters. So the height, when we add these together and round to significant figures, is 4.0 meters. So that's our answer to the first question. Second question is how long does it take before the rocket falls back to the ground? Well, we know that it takes 0.91 seconds to get up. And we have all the information. We have acceleration, and we have initial velocity, and we have uh, displacement for the trip it takes falling down, but they're the exact same values, just opposite signs. So you can remember that it always takes the same amount of time to come down as it took to come up. So for the second one, we just do, this second question, we just do 0.91 times 2. So it is in the air 1.8 seconds. Let's look at a second example. A stone is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 25 meters per second. What will be the velocity of the stone after one second? So let's write down what we know. The initial velocity is 25 meters per second. The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is where we need to decide on a direction. I tend to say the direction of motion when the problem starts is the positive direction. So up is positive means the acceleration is negative, and time is one second, and we're solving for velocity. If we write all those variables, we can see the only equation that uses all of them is v equals v0 plus at. So we can plug into this. The initial velocity is 25 meters per second, and the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're going to multiply that by one second. Now the multiplying by one second doesn't change the number, but it does change the units. So we end up with 25 meters per second plus negative 9.8 meters per second. When we do that, we get 15.2. meters per second. Now we have to look at significant figures. And because our time is really inexactly measured, it has one significant figure, we have to round this to have one significant figure. So we have to round this to 20 meters per second. And I know it really bothers some of you because you're like, well, 20 meters per second is so much less accurate than 15.2. But you can't be more accurate than 20 meters per second because you don't know the time very accurately. One second could, it's any number, one point some number that 
rounded to one. So it's anything between 0.5 and 1.4 seconds. If they wanted a more exact number, then you would have a more exact measurement. Let's do one more example problem with free fall. We have a 5 gram rock and a 100 gram rock that are dropped from the top of a 250 meter building. Assuming frictionless conditions, which hits the ground first? How fast is it moving when it hits the ground? So let's write what we know, because that's how we always start a problem. And we'll just say mass 1 and mass 2. And we know the, the top of the building is 250 meters high. We need to decide which direction is positive. And because these rocks are traveling down, I'm going to say down is positive. You can say up is positive if you want to stay with that. Just make sure your answers are consistent for that. So I'm still going to say that my initial displacement is 0. And my final displacement is 250 meters. We also know that the only force acting on it is gravity, so we know the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. We know one more thing because of this word right here. These rocks are not thrown down, they're dropped. So that very split second when you drop them, their initial velocity is zero until gravity starts accelerating them. So we know that their initial velocity is zero. So which hits the ground first? We've learned that if there was no such thing as air resistance, which is friction, all things would drop at the same rate because they have the same acceleration. So they hit the ground at the same time. The second question is how fast is it moving when it hits the ground? and it could be either rock, because they're going to be moving the same speed. So we want to know the final velocity. And the equation we typically use to find final velocity is V equals V naught plus AT. But we don't know time. We do have enough information to find time over here though. So we can use our displacement equation in order to find our time. You don't have to write each equation each time, but I find that it helps me remember them. And so I always do. So our final displacement is 250. It equals zero, our initial displacement. Since our initial velocity is zero, it doesn't matter what the time is, that's going to be zero, isn't it? Plus one half times 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared. So if we get rid of the zeros and do what math we can, 1 half times 9.8 gives us 4.9 meters per second squared times time squared. If we divide both sides by 4.9, we get that time squared equals 51.0. And we can see when we divide, the meters go away, and we have seconds squared. Now, don't stop here because I don't want to know what time squared is. I want to know what time is. So when we take the square root of both sides, we get that it takes 7.1 seconds for the rock to hit the ground. Now we can plug this time into this equation up here in order to find the final velocity. So we've got the final velocity equals 0 plus 9.8 meters per second squared times 7.1 seconds. That cancels out.
and we get 69.58 meters per second. Let's talk about significant figures. We have to have two because of 250 and because of 9.8. The masses don't matter. They wouldn't change it, but they don't matter because we don't use them. So in order to round this to two, we would round that up to 70. But to give that two significant figures, we'd say 7.0 times 10 to the first meters per second.